Hey guys, in this video, we have a bunch of different websites that pay you to do essentially nothing. And why, when I say nothing, I don't mean, you know, absolutely nothing, but basically you do a little bit and then it basically takes care of itself is what you essentially would be doing. So, and then you also have the websites that pay you for something you're doing on a daily basis, regardless of whether you're getting paid or not. Like you're doing these things right now, probably, but you're not getting paid for them. Whereas some of these websites can actually pay you for the things you're already doing. So that's the kind of stuff I'm gonna show you in this video. The first one is studypool.com. Now they have a few different things you can do here, but the main thing I want to focus on is sell docs here at the top right. So what you do here is you can actually get paid if you are in college or you went to college and you still have your notes from different classes, you can basically upload those notes to this website where basically people come here for all sorts of tutoring and all sorts of school subjects and you can basically upload them and get paid up to five thousand dollars a month by having people use your notes to look at your notes maybe they missed a class maybe they don't feel like they took very good notes and they want to compare and basically you can get paid by sharing your documents to tens of millions of students and you get paid ten dollars every time a student views them and all you have to do is upload each document. Each document can basically make you money from now until the end of time unless something happens to the study pool website. So you're talking what is basically passive income. You upload something, you had to do it anyway for your class to pass the class, but you're basically getting paid now for that in passive income. So people might make, you know, 10 or 20 bucks a month. Some people might make thousands of dollars a month. It just depends on how many you have how in demand these classes are and then you can just upload them and let it do the work for you after that you don't have to market anything you don't have to start a business you don't have to build a website or anything you just basically take something you already took notes on and then put it on the internet and let it make you money and help students who might need that stuff so you just upload the document upload class notes old homework exam or quiz preps zip files etc so there's a lot of different types of documents you can do you get approved, the system re reviews and approves uploaded documents for quality, and then you have tens of millions of students search and access your documents, and then you earn $10 every time somebody views it. Each document can be viewed pretty much an unlimited number of times. Now you have a, a few top selling documents on here. As, a, as an example, you have like one in anatomy from the Pasadena City College, it's earned $4,400, sold 734 times. In other words, it's been viewed 734 times. Nine pages worth of notes in the Introduction to Terminology and Body Organization Study Guide. So that would just be one example. You can see some of the top earners on the side here making tens of thousands of dollars. Um, you know, Some of these are tutors. Some of these are people who just upload study guides. But it's a great way to make extra money from something you might have already done. Another thing you can make money from that you're probably going to have is a vehicle, especially if you're in the US or in a first world country where you know it is normal to drive or to commute. In many cases, people are starting to work from home. If I have anything to do with it, I'm going to help you work from home and ditch your commute entirely. And if that actually happens, what you can do after I get you a work from home job or whether you get your own work from home job is you can basically rent out your car to people who may need it or who may want to drive it if it's you know a cool car or maybe they want to rent a car and see how they like it like for instance a lot of people were on the edge about whether or not to get an electric car like a tesla so you see a tesla in this image right here as an example well if they're in the area maybe they're on vacation or maybe they're visiting relatives you can let them rent your Tesla, for instance, for a couple days, and you can get paid a few hundred dollars, and then they can also basically get an idea of whether or not they wanna buy one in the future. It's a win-win scenario. Your car's not being driven right now. You might as well rent it out to somebody who, who could pay you some money to drive it. And then they get to experience a different type of car, whether it's for pleasure, whether it's because they just need something and they want to, they don't want to go through the traditional enterprise car rental companies and things like that, or whatever the case may be. Or maybe they want to, you know, test something out, see if they actually would like to buy one first by driving it for a few days. All of this, of course, is covered by insurance, and you can go to Turo.com and look for the calculator, or you can Google the calculator. It'll give you an idea of how much you could earn. So 
So if you're looking at what you could essentially earn by loan cost, average earnings per year, they'll tell you about how you how much you could earn in average earnings for each type of vehicle. And you'll notice that many of these are like American made, just very normal average cars that a lot of people might have. So for instance, estimated value for this one, $11,000, you could be earning $7,300 a year on average from a Chevy Cruze. You have like a Dodge Grand Caravan, 16,000 estimated value. You could be earning $10,138 a year. You're looking at what is, I believe, kind of a more of a minivan. That could be great if people are, you know, using it for a road trip or using it for a larger family and things like that. So you have all these different average earnings, how much the car is worth, and you can kind of compare them, what the average loan cost is and all of that. And then you can also just go to the home page here and then this is what the main page looks like. You can search for all sorts of cars on here and then you can become a host. You'll also notice that the insurance is provided by Traveler's Insurance. So if something happens, if for some reason somebody gets in a wreck while renting out your car, it's going to be covered, of course. The average annual income for one car is $10,516 a year now then you go up to let's say it's three cars 31,547 so then you go up from there so on average you're looking at what could be ten thousand dollars a year for a car but they don't really tell you how many days per year you're renting that out of course but you have seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in liability insurance from travelers they have 24 7 safety and support they have an easy to use app for managing everything and another thing you can do is look up some information about people on their blog who actually turn this into a full-time business. So this consultant, for instance, actually turned the Turo app into a business by having a fleet of cars. So they would take what they earned, they would reinvest it, and basically, eventually, they had a fleet of cars where they would get paid for people to rent these out all the time. So you're like basically like your own little version of like a enterprise car rental company or something like that. And you have all sorts of different types of cars. You can research which ones are the most popular for people to rent. You can maybe even have different classes of cars. Like for instance, in this picture, if somebody wants to rent a sports car, they could rent a two seater Porsche. If somebody wants to rent, you know, a Tesla or an electric car, they have like a, it looks like a Tesla Model Y here. So you have, different ways you can go about this. You can go about this in extra income and maybe you work from home and you don't need your car every day or you can go about this in a way where you're turning this into a business and you reinvest and you have a fleet of cars that you rent out all the time. Kind of like the Airbnb of cars in a way if you want to think about it like that. But the nice thing is you're essentially making use of something that's not going to take a bunch of extra work on your part unless you really want to turn this into a big business. You might have to research cars and stuff but you're essentially just renting out something when it's not being used, letting somebody else drive. You're not having to constantly crank out hours into something like this. Next, you have a company called Neighbor, which is at neighbor.com. And when you go to be a host at neighbor.com, you can get paid to do a lot of different things. You can earn passive income by letting people store vehicles, letting people store belongings in your home or in your garage or something like that. And that's essentially what you're doing. You're listing some sort of space and it can be a lot of different types of spaces, but it's basically like a peer to peer storage company. So instead of people going and renting a typical uh, storage garage, like at self, like a self storage company where they have all these different units and you rent a storage unit at a company and you have to drive there to get it. You basically can list a space for other people and essentially you can get paid for just whatever extra space you, you have. So this is a great way to basically get paid without doing a lot of work because you're essentially, if you have extra space in your house, let's say you are like single and you have a house with multiple bedrooms or you have a big garage or you have a storage unit or like a, maybe you have a, like a shed in the backyard or something that you don't need to use right now, you can literally rent out those spaces and let people pay you a monthly fee to store there. So it's just making use of something you already have without a lot of extra work. So they basically say that there is a $1 million in free host liability coverage and property protection plans for renters. You're in control. You control who to rent to, what items are allowed, and when they can access the space. You reside whether you decide whether to reinvest or enjoy the extra cash. Guaranteed payments. They handle payments so monthly deposits show up in your account 
We'll even cover the cost if the renter doesn't pay. So you don't have to worry about collecting. Like for instance, you know, you hear about these stories of like people having a rental property and then they have trouble getting the renter to actually pay them. And then they have a hard time evicting them and all this stuff. You don't have to worry about this kind of stuff with this website. That's why it's nice to use a third party sometimes, even though you're giving up part of the earnings for a fee it makes everything so much easier that a lot of times it's worth it so you can also check out their app you know just like many of these peer-to-peer -peer gig economy type of services they have an app where you manage everything so they have a really highly rated app 4.6 out of 5 stars out of thousands of ratings you can see different screenshots here of what this looks like you list your space people you basically negotiate what people can or cannot put in that space. For instance, if you don't want people to put like, you know, guns or something in that space or store guns or something, you don't, you can make it where they can't do that or whatever. It just depends. But it's a cool way to make extra money from something like storage that you ha may have a little bit of extra to use. Now you also have a website, which is also kind of an app. So I just showed you the app because it's easier to just go ahead and download it from the Google Play or the app store for Apple, but it's the Nielsen mobile app. Now Nielsen is a company that's actually known for like TV ratings and things like that. If you've ever heard of them, um, they've been around a really long time. You know, like if you're watching this and you're close to my age, you're like a millennial, your parents have probably heard of Nielsen. Um, they may have heard, gotten surveys in the mail from them in the past or something like that, or maybe seen commercials in the past, but, but they also have these Nielsen mobile apps that you can download for your phone where basically it's just a free app you sign up you create an account and then you have this points balance and you basically just make sure this green check mark is active and there's no action required which basically means that it's working it's going to run in the background on your phone as you use your mobile phone as normal and it's just going to collect market research data so that's basically the whole point of Nielsen as a company is to collect data for market research purposes to understand consumer behavior. They're not going to use it and sell it off to a bunch of people and you're going to get spammed to death. It's more like you're just helping with studies, in other words. So if you're okay with participating in studies with a reputable company like Nielsen, you can get their app for your Android or Apple device. It's very highly rated. It's around four stars out of five on both devices. And you can get paid up to like $50 a year. So obviously not enough to pay the bills necessarily, but you could get, you know, maybe a decent little dinner for you and your, your loved one basically once a year or twice a year just by having this app on your phone and not having to do anything else. So next we have the brave.com browser. This can be downloaded on brave.com or you can go to whichever app store you choose and download the app there. As you can see, it's very highly rated with 4.7 out of five stars and 1.7 million reviews. It's actually been endorsed by major um, podcast users and stuff like for instance, Joe Rogan, if you've ever watched that show, um, he's endorsed using it for his devices. But these are this is basically a type of browser where it is more privacy focused and basically the way they pay you is for seeing ads. So instead of you just seeing ads like you do like on Google Chrome or Firefox, et cetera, and not getting any piece of the pie, uh, basically Brave has created a more secure and, and apparently a three times faster browser for you to use, but also can have built-in VPNs and all of that stuff, but also pays you in crypto to basically look at ads. So instead of you just seeing ads and just being bombarded by it, you actually get paid to see the ads while you're using the internet as normal. And you use it just the way you would with Google Chrome. So now you can see right here, this is actually what you get paid in. It's called Basic Attention Token or BAT, otherwise known as BAT. And it is basically the token that is specifically for the Brave browser. That's basically how they pay you for seeing ads and sponsored posts on the browser. And again, the browser is supposed to be faster, more secure, more privacy focused than the main browsers out there like Google, Firefox, or you know maybe Safari and stuff like that. It's very highly rated as an app as well. You see that it is very 
uh, well put together. I've actually tried this myself and I think it's actually a great app. I've never really had a lot of problems with it. And there are a few different ways you get paid. Like I said, you can get paid based on the ads that you see. So these ads appear as notifications in the browser, often as small pop-ups in the corner of the screen. User, users are rewarded with BAT tokens for viewing these ads. You get paid monthly and it can also be contributed to creators. So some creators, like for instance, if there are some blogs that you like to follow, you can contribute that directly to the blogs that you like to follow, for instance. So you can do that as well and kind of show some appreciation in the form of like a donation of crypto from Brave paying you and then you sending maybe a portion of it to your favorite content creators. And then you also have uh, premium content that you can get with the BAT token if you want to pay for that directly using the crypto that Brave pays you. And they also offer sponsored images on the browser's new tab. So they have something like sponsored images here. And basically it looks something like this. You see like this uh, image where you will go to a new tab and it'll show you like, you know, this example would be the BitPay debit card. There's all sorts of different things it could be, but essentially people or advertisers are paying to show some sort of sponsored image. And if you opt into that, you can get paid just to see that on a new tab, which I don't see why you wouldn't do it necessarily unless ads just, you know, get on your nerves that much. But they answer, they offer these sponsored images on the new tab page. You can opt in to view these and you earn BAT tokens in exchange for displaying sponsored backgrounds when opening a new tab. So that's essentially how it works. And this is kind of an example of what that would look like. Now, the only thing about um, collecting your money, depending on the country you live in, you might have to have an, upload, an uphold account or some other type of uh, crypto account where you basically can actually turn the BAT into you know crypto that you can collect and you can exchange and all of that and you can actually pay yourself. Otherwise, it'll just kind of accumulate in the in the built-in Brave wallet. But to actually take it and transfer it to where you can actually pay yourself into your bank account or something like that, you may need to have a uphold account depending on the country you live in. Um, I believe a lot of people in the U.S. have to do this, but I'll try to get an update about that in the future, maybe in a blog post or something. But the nice thing about it is you're essentially taking what you're already doing. You're already using the Internet. There's pretty much nobody I've ever met that doesn't use the Internet at least a little bit. And you're just doing whatever it is you like to do on the Internet. And then you can just do that with Brave instead of some of the other options and actually get paid a little bit for it. Now, another thing you can do is rent out your parking spot or your garage. So if you have space in your garage, have you, I mean, you've probably seen, especially if you live in a neighborhood, how many people just stuff their garage to the ceiling with junk. If you cleaned out half of that, you could get paid up to $450 a month just to list some parking in there. Or maybe you have like a, a parking spot at your apartment complex or something like that. Now, if your apartment complex doesn't check like the license plates and stuff like that, you might be able to rent that out. It just depends. There might be a space outside of your house, maybe in front of your home, you know, next to the curb. People, You might could rent that out. It might not pay as much because it's not covered, but it's just an example of how you can get paid by just being more efficient with your life and using your extra space. So with this one, it's at spacer.com, and this is a place where you can list parking. It's usually either an indoor lot, driveway, outside covered, garage, outdoor lot, or carport. So if you have any of those, and you have extra an extra one of those, an extra space in your garage, an extra covered parking space, maybe you have a carport next to your house or something, if, if that's allowed where you live, you could maybe rent out part of that area to where people can pay you a few hundred dollars a month just for that. Well, it's if it's not being used anyway, it's just wasting space. It's basically just, you know, it's inefficient. You're not getting paid for that and you're not using it. So it's just kind of wasted. So this allows you to make the most of all your parking space and get paid a few hundred dollars a month extra for this. And they paid out over $950,000 to paid hosts. You can make up to $5,400 a year according to them, which could pay, that could pay your, property taxes in some places that could pay for student loans, all sorts of other things as well. And it's hands off passive monthly income. Last but not least, we have a company called Rakuten. Rakuten is really great because you're getting paid for something you're already doing. 
you're getting paid for shopping on Y. Now, if you don't shop on Y, you do literally everything in store, then this probably won't help you. But if you do shop at all on Y, you can get up to 10% cash back on pretty much anything that you buy. I guarantee that pretty much every major company you can think of outside of maybe like Amazon or some of these other ones, like I don't know about Walmart, but like more kind of uh, specialized stores. If you're thinking of a store that has literally everything like Amazon and Walmart, you may not get as much. But if you think of like Verizon is a phone store, you think of say, you know, a place that sells software or a place that sells computer components like Newegg or a place that sells home improvement stuff like Lowe's or Home Depot. Those are the types of places that specialize in one particular thing or a couple of different things or some sort of niche that you can get paid cash back. So for instance, you can see, for instance, if you wanted to try like, like, you know, a lot of people still have New Year's resolutions in January here and you're looking at maybe you want to lose some weight or you want to get some meal prep stuff going you could get paid 45% cash back to try out every plate if you want to book a trip you can get paid 10% back with TripAdvisor if you want to save some money and try out a uh, kind of a bulk marketplace store where you like kind of like Costco but a little different you could try out Sam's Club for 10% back if you want to upgrade your coffee machine you can get 10% back with Keurig. You know, there's all sorts of just different things you can find on here. And what's also nice that makes it easier is one, they have an app that you can use. And two, they also have a Chrome extension. So literally when you go and search in the, the browser of your choice, if you're doing it on computer, the Chrome extension makes more sense. If you're on your phone and you mostly search on your phone, I would recommend doing the Rakuten app. For instance, the Rakuten app just looks like this. And then you can go on here and shop online so instead of just looking up the store in your browser on google or safari or something like that you would go to the rakuten app you would find that store and then you could order from there and just basically that you can save your favorites if you go to the same five or ten stores all the time for instance you can save them on there and then you can go and you can save a lot more money than any credit card is ever going to pay you in cash back i pretty much guarantee you that as you can see right here with my account at the top right i have 533 dollars total that i've earned in cash back from using this website over the years so it's not going to obviously pay you a big income it's basically just paying you back for something you're already buying anyway now if you want to try out the chrome extension you can actually go to the rakuten website or just go to google and type in you know rakuten extension and it'll basically have a page that looks like this or you can go to like the google chrome store which i believe also works with the bing browser as well but basically you get this and it'll just have this pop-up anytime you're on that website like if you went to you know if you went to the new egg website and you wanted to buy computer components it would basically just pop up on the the corner of your browser and be like hey do you want to save five percent or whatever you click the button and then you just shop and check out as normal and then it just shows up in your rakuten account and then you can get paid via paypal or you can get paid via like a check in the mail or however you want to do it so it just basically makes use of something you're already doing. That's kind of the purpose of most of the websites on this list. So hopefully this was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell if you want more daily work from home opportunities like these and other types of ways to make money online, obviously like these as well. And if you want to let me know what you thought about this video, please click the like button if you thought this was actually helpful and actually educational that tells me the more likes i get on something that this is a good subject for me to touch more on in the future if you want to ask me a question or suggest something i cover in the future let me know in the comments and i'll see you in the next video